Well, welcome to another Way Nice Photos camera video. And today we're going to be talking about a 360 camera, and that's this camera right here. Now, this camera right here is claimed to be the best 360 camera that's like a portable device, one you can put on a selfie stick, take outside and move around, and generally is used so you can vlog yourself or get outside type of shots. And it's this one comes with a lot of hype. It's got a Leica lens, it's got a, a one inch sensor, and it, this is claiming to be a next level above your cameras like your GoPro Max and your X3 Insta. So let's roll the intro and let's have a bit of a talk about this camera and does it live up to the hype. Well, with this camera here, I watched a lot of videos online on YouTube and about this camera, and there was a lot of hype. A lot of people saying it was really good. They're saying the low light performance is really good, and so on and so on. And I got a 360 camera. I got the GoPro Max, and I was very happy with that camera. So I wanted to get something that was going to perform and be a little bit better. And so I ran out and I bought this camera. I was, I think I was the first one that that was in WA and I got it off the shelf. So I've had this camera for a while, but as I started using it, my smile was removed from my face because this camera here has a lot of Achilles heels and I must admit, I am not very impressed with this camera for the money you pay. You pay it's quite a lot more than the, than the normal smaller type cameras and it has a lot of drawbacks now the first thing if you're going to use a camera and you're used to using cameras and you're used to using proper cameras like an r3 or an r5 or a sony a7 III, whatever you're generally used to using the tools like the histogram and so forth and with this camera here i didn't think there was a histogram in it first but then i found out that you can use it on the phone. You can open the phone up and there's a histogram, so then you can set your settings. But when I went to use it, the camera in my climate, because it's really bright here in Australia, you can't get it off the white line. It's telling you it's clipping the highlights all the time unless you, you wind it right down. Well, you can't because you can't get the shutter speed up high enough. So you go, well, what's going on here? Okay, yeah, if you put it into auto or you run it like that, it does look okay. But according to the histogram, it's telling you that it's clipping the highlights. So the shutter speed in this camera just doesn't go high enough for a really bright sunny day like we have in Australia. So that was the first thing. Histogram is either useless or the camera is not going to a high enough shutter speed. So basically, you know, using the histogram was not giving me any more information to help reduce clipping my highlights. So that was the first thing. And the histogram, you have to open your phone to look at it, which, come on Insta, just put the histogram on the screen, make it the full screen and just darken the background. It's a 360 camera, we don't need to see what we're doing. We want to see the histogram, we want to get the exposure right. So that was the first thing that I was disappointed. I thought, cheapest creepers, this camera here, it's kind of, this is supposed to be more of a pro end 360 portable camera and you can't even use tools tools on it properly to get your exposure right so that was the first thing i didn't like i didn't like that you had to open your phone because that makes it longer to use it's more inconvenient i want to be able to get this camera put it on my selfie stick and then just start taking my pictures so that was the first thing i was disappointed and then when i started getting the pictures out of the camera i noticed that even on the low setting the the colors are too saturated for what i want and also the sharpening was too sharp for what i wanted it was a lot sharper than on my gopro max and the colors weren't as flat as the low setting on my gopro max and the colors that'd be fine if the colors were nice but they're not they're they're just not looking nice i don't like the the color that comes straight out of the camera so it's very hard to take the saturation, you know, to change the colors when you've already got the saturation there. And it's very hard to remove the sharpness. So I didn't like the picture that comes out of this camera. That was the first thing. Now, the, fir the, <laughs> the third thing was what I found using this camera, 
compared to my GoPro 360 is when you get it close to things like this, you find that the camera doesn't like to focus too close. So you've got to be careful if you're doing some sort of shots where you're going close and then you're pulling away and you're getting that nice from a close up to a really wide angle shot that you like to get, like that crane shot you like in the 360s, you've got to be careful how close you go because otherwise it goes out of focus and then it looks funny. Whilst on my GoPro 360, never had that issue. So that's something else you have to watch when you're using this camera. So that was another annoyance. It doesn't focus very closely. Now, the, the, the fourth thing I really didn't like, I didn't like the way that the app works in this. It seems to be have a lot more steps and more convoluting than the GoPro app. The GoPro app, you can just put your two fingers on the screen. You can move it around and twist it around and, and you can just move it any way you want, slide it around. But with this, you have to use a number of different tools to try and get the picture where you want it to. And it's very, very difficult. Yeah, it has some nice features. The, the, the fast moving blur looks pretty cool. But for repositioning the photo, I found not very intuitive at all. I don't like the app software. And then it's always coming up with things that they're trying to, to get you to sign up for. Okay, GoPro are doing that now as well. So they're probably, there's probably some sameness there that you're getting from the two companies. But with this camera here and the hype that it was a one inch sensor, it's a Leica lens and it looks very well made. It looks very premium when you see it from the way it's made the performance out of this is really mediocre. It just hasn't really lifted the picture quality much above the 360 cameras that we've used to that came out sort of three or four years ago. Yes, it has a little bit more low light performance, but it's not its not something you would say, oh yeah, you really notice it. It's, it's, it's something, it's, it's slight, but it, it is there, but it's not something where you would say, oh, look, yeah, I really noticed that. It's, you still need, this camera still needs to have a lot of light to work correctly. You can't, the picture will be, start to become quite mushy if, you, if it's in low light. So anything that's under trees or shady or whatever like that, it starts to get a little bit mushy still, even though it's a bit better than what we've had on the previous 360 cameras. But apart from that, the disappointment to me is even when you have got good light, it's not that easy to get a good picture out of it. And the other thing as well, this camera overheats. It overheats here in Australia because um, that's one thing I was really disappointed when I first started using it, took it down the park. I was wanting to do one of those hyper ones and I was running around the park with this thing. Do, 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 do. And then it turned off and I thought, what the hell's going on here? Like I just bought this camera and now it's broken. And then I realized it had overheated. So it doesn't give you any warning, anything like that. It just turns off. So that's another thing about this camera that I was really disappointed about. And considering that the premium price is quite significant, I think it's around about half of the cheaper ones. Again, you're paying and the camera is more fragile and it has all these negatives. It's not really offering much extra for what you're getting with the cheaper 360 cameras. They still need a long way to go. And I would still put this camera pretty much in the toy market. It's still a toy camera. It's the, the It doesn't look like a toy camera. It looks very premium, but the picture and everything that's coming out of it is more of a hobbyist type quality picture and the way that they've set up the sharpening and the, the colors and saturation. What's coming out of the camera is more in a hobbyist scene, maybe pro-consumer, but definitely this camera here, you wouldn't use it in a professional environment at all. It's just not good enough. I don't think it's good enough at all. It's it's just, you really notice the difference when you switch from a normal camera to one of these. And it sort of makes you feel like you don't want to use it. And you don't want to use it as like an action camera because it's too fragile. So it's kind of in this like halfway house between being something that's a bit better, which it doesn't really live up to, and you can't really use it as an action camera because it's too fragile. Anyway, guys, that's where I'm going to leave it with this Leica 1-inch sensor Insta360 camera. 
if Insta are watching this video, please, please, please do some work on this camera. It needs a lot of work on the software. For people who want to get a decent picture out of it, it the, the picture out of it needs to be 10 bit and it needs to be a softer image and it also needs to be more desaturated. That's what I'd like to see out of this camera. So then we can we can play around with it a little bit better and we can get a more decent picture out of it. Anyway, guys, that's where I'm going to leave it. Leave your comments down below. Have you got a 360 camera? Have you tried this one inch? What do you think of it? And were you thinking of buying this camera? I really can't recommend it as it is at the moment. Anyway, that's where I'm going to leave it. Sorry for the bad news, guys. And I'll see you next vid.